All right, everybody, I'm gonna try this again. Sorry about the technical difficulties. Welcome back, sorry about that. We'll see if we can get Rick back on. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Sorry about that, man. Sometimes the signal in the market, as you probably know from doing art yeah. down here, yeah. it's not the strongest. Yeah. So I right. think we got a good spot. Sorry about that, everybody. All but, good. Uh, we're on with Rick, William, Rick and Yolanda Williams. Sorry about the technical difficulties. Let's pick it up where we left off. I'm sorry about okay. that, guys. So uh, I, was just, I was just mentioning that our tagline is the talented 10th. It, it's... It's a, and that's a statement of strategy and of accountability. We feel like we have a, 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 a job here. Yeah. yeah it's from, it's, it's from the boys. And if you go look it up, you can see what it stands for. However, that's something that we've internalized. It was started and it was something that was made just for black people, but it really is for anyone that is helping the, the cause of the underrepresented. So that's yeah. something that we kind of walk around on with our with it. We walk around with that on our back every day. And if you look at the the um, murals, the first one that we did was entitled "Teach a Man to Fish," and it was in this same location. And uh, it was done with myself and, and Natural. And all of the murals feature the, the 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 distinct life camouflage on the back, so you know it was us and we were here. But we're really a background because we're still doing it in collaboration with some of the most talented artists that we've ever met. So that first mural was teaching man to fish and the focus was a fishing lure. And it was done in a natural's um, like triangular style. This one we did, this was the second one. And I did this with B Mike, Brandon Odom and, and, and me and me and Brandon got together through Instagram. He saw a shirt that I did that just said the talented tent. And he had this pro he had this um program or this project in, in uh Louisiana called Project V. It's where he literally took a whole housing project and painted the whole thing. And that really was the start. Like that's how I found how I found Brandon. And then he was like, Rick, we're we're producing this video and I wanted to know if I could uh we could do a collaboration on the talented tenth shirt. So we did that collaboration and then we kinda just stayed in touch. And then the opportunity came for the murals in the market. And then, you know, I told Rula and Jesse about him. They liked him. He came out. And then we took, this is Evan. I, I took a portrait of Evan on, uh, in the back of the old 1X run. And that ended up being the portrait that we used for B Mike to actually, um, to paint. And then one of the things that Brandon kind of pushes is, is this old saying that said they tried to bury us they didn't know we were seeds. And I feel like that's a metaphor for black people around the world. At the end of the day, we're written off all the time. We're, 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 we're talked about like, we're not valued in the community and we actually bring the sauce to the community. We are the sauce and we've been the sauce. So at the end of the day, when we're putting out these pieces of art or wh whether we're putting out apparel or, or, or footwear, Everything has us in mind because I'm here to fight for the people. So at the end of the day, whether I'm whether you're marching for for the cause of injustice or you're putting up pieces in protest to what's really going on here in America all the time, it's still the same and your fight is important. So really, that's, the, that's why I'm grateful for the opportunity to be able to, to, to put these messages on buildings. I'm grateful for the people that allow them to be put on their buildings. And I'm grateful for Jesse, Rula, and Dan for creating the opportunity for people like myself to be able to get these messages out. That's what's up, man. I mean, people don't really understand. And this is not a, a cheerleading session, but what they've done for us uh, Rula, Jesse, and Dan has been an amazing thing as far as giving us the voice. And this is a perfect example right now 
You know, we talked this week about the tour and we talked about, do we cancel the tour or do we continue to do it? Yeah. And we thought this was a perfect opportunity for us to come together as a people and talk about what's happening right now, as well as talk about the opportunities that we've been given and that the opportunities that exist in the future for us. And that's another reason why I brought you here, man, because let's talk about where you started. All right. We talked about the mural because this is the culmination of many years of hard work. A lot of people think that you just came up and you just started painting and doing all this stuff. And that's because they don't get the opportunity to hear the background. But tell people where you started. Well, I mean, we start you, before you start the whole up, you pick yeah. where you want to start. All right. Because I know you yeah. can start in many places. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell so you, you the real start. starting point. The real starting point is when I married Yolanda. In college, we found each other at Oakland University. And God told me, he was like, this is going to be your wife. And I, and I talked to Yolanda. And we went through our, you know, the courting stages. But what I found is that when I married Yolanda, that opened everything up. Because now I have a reason. I'm building for the revolution. I'm raising the revolution. They're downstairs playing right now. And that came out of us. We weren't able to reach our godly state until we were married. And then we were able to bring two lives into the world. So that's when it really changed. It's not about design. It's not about um, sneaker projects, murals. It's about everything together and how it works together for, for the good of the people. And I think that the, the defining moment that changed everything was when Yolanda and I got married and we found out that everything that I need is in Yolanda and everything she needs is in me. And we come together and we handle everything together, whether it's us figuring out homeschooling for our children or us coming together and figuring out how to, to build a product business like Cream Blends or us coming together and running an agency. It's all, it was literally, even when I, even when I was building Burn Rubber, I'm, I'm talking to Yolanda and I'm, I'm understanding what I'm doing through those conversations because she understands me in a way that no one really understands me. That's what's up, that's what's up. So let's bring Yolanda in. I mean, okay, so you meet Rick and uh -huh. he, he's got all these ideas. Yeah. What do you say when he's like, okay, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that? At first, are you like, this is wild, I don't know about this dude? Are you, are, are you all in right off? Yeah, I was all in uh, right, right from the beginning. But she had jokes, though. Um, but, well, when Rick, Jay, when Rick first, okay, the very first mural, like I showed up, he was there with Naturel, and he was on the little the lift, and I just looked up, and I'm like, are you serious? Like, how did he... How did this man end up paying murals just off the jump? Like so, right. it, like so, Rick does stuff, Jay, that surprises me as well. But I just roll with it. And it's like, <laughs> hey, it's always been this way. He's an artist now. Deal with it. Right. Like, that's how we've always been. Like even when we first got together, like I, before Burn Rubber and all the other businesses, we had a screen printing business in our basement. Uh, we've done what we had uh, graphic design biz. like so we're awesome. we're the ones that are crazy like we're literally I tell people we always just jump off and then hope that whatever we build bro well the foundation will come and catch us when when if we fall but we're God constantly is the building. Fake. so at the end of the day when we started that t-shirt brand business in uh at Oakland University one of our one of our mentors and our our advocates at Oakland University Jean Ann Miller was like yo we have this event coming up and we need 500 t-shirts. And, like, and me and Yolanda never printed any t-shirts. Not, not one. We were like, but we had this, just got the stuff. Yeah. So we were like, we got it. It's not Let us yet. know. We'll have, when do you need them? <laughs> right. And then, so we met, gave them a quote. It was for 500 shirts. We didn't even have a conveyor dryer. We were flash drying everything. Yeah. So, but they believed in us. They gave us the opportunity one we i think we had the date wrong but it was off of what they we had sent it they approved it but it said the, wrong the first instead of the seventh so i literally had, had printed 500 shirts went back in 
and wrote the and fixed it with like a little I had like a little pen and I grabbed got some of the plastic off <laughs> and made the ones into sevens and then dried them all again. So See, that if was you got like that one shirt, you know businesses ever. Whoever's got that shirt right now, if you got it. <laughs> It was more at Rick, you know what I'm saying? Like, get him. It was like, a, it, was like a, it was a lime green shirt with like purple and, and uh, white. It yeah. was devastating. But I so, think for for entrepreneurship has always for us has been that you just try. You like we're like, what do we have to lose? Yes. So we know you, how to be poor well. Yep. So done that. So my backstory when I met Rick, me Rick and I were heavy in the sneakers. Still are. So we grown yeah. men. Still are. He can't take the hey. love out. But I no. met Rick. He was working at, I ain't going to say, he was, He might tell you. He was working at a sneaker store, a local sneaker store. It wasn't yeah. a shop. It was a store. A store. <laughs> he hated and, that job. And me and him, and Rick and me always were putting each other onto information. And they yeah. had these Mars 4s. And they had just come <laughs> in at his store. And he was like, yo, you need to come cop these. Was right this when I was at Finish Line? Yes. Oh, yes. my God. <laughs> Yeah. So I knew some cats who owned a sneaker store, but were trying to get out. Mm -hmm. And I knew Rick was trying to get in. Mm -hmm. yep. Boom. Connections yep. made. And then, and then that's when I started my free internship. It, it started the free internship. <laughs> but then what did that turn into? Me buying Burn Rubber. Burn Rubber. One of the yeah. most influential sneaker stores in the country right now. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think what happened with that was uh, uh, there's a good point in that. And this is something I talk to a lot of the people that I mentor now, Yolanda mentors. I went, I saw, I had just graduated college and I was working at Finish Line. And I looked at it and I was like, yo, this isn't it. Like I worked there because I wanted to see if I would want to buy, I mean, if I wanted to right, start a yeah. store. And at the time, me and Ro, Roland, my partner from Brown Rubber, were, we were, um, we would like take trips to New York just to get babes. Like right. we, we drove all the way out there and then we drove, drive back the next day. And I was like, yo, I'm working. I started working at, working for KC, for Kenny, Kenny Carroll. And I was just learning. And he had a lot of knowledge that he would give me. And then I was like, I just would come up there every single day after, after class. And then I was like, yo, you don't even have a website. So I created their website, and he gave me a camera for creating his website. So How was the website? Was that sweet? It wasn't that sweet. Yeah. But <laughs> it doesn't I matter. It, it was the sweet. first. I created the first ever Burn Rubber website myself from an HTML book. Yeah. <laughs> Another so, hustle. But what it taught me was that humility and being able to go and just listen to Kenny and learn from Kenny. I didn't know what God was, was doing. Because I wasn't there like, I want to buy burn rubber. I was there like, how can I help? What can I do? You guys should do this. I'm giving suggestions and really putting myself into his shoes. And that's what we do right now with the distinct life. When we help others, we put ourselves in their shoes and we provide solutions through the agencies. So I've been doing the same thing I'm doing, but I didn't even notice that I was doing that. So the way God works is you do these little things and you're putting your time in here, you're putting your time in there. And then after, after a while, you just look up and you're like, wow, we have an agency. And now we have- You're in a rhythm. Uh, yeah, a rhythm. And we're constantly looking for that rhythm. Okay, so after, yep. so you do burn rubber. Yeah. You're, it's, it's insanely popular. It's doing its thing, making money. Yeah. Then you decide to step out of it. Talk about that decision. So that was what me and Yolanda referred to as the pivot. Yeah, the so, power of the pivot. Yeah. So what we end up doing was, um, it you know, a series of unfortunate events. It got to the point where we just have one store, and there's two full families being supported by this one store. Mm -hmm. And after a while, with with all of the bills that we have to pay, and it just got too tough. So I had to. I and if I didn't leave the business, it would have just died. If me or Ro, one of us had to go because we couldn't keep taking the money or else it would just be cash poor and we just couldn't keep doing business. So I said, yo, Spit, I think I'm, I, I end up selling Spit the, the um, store and then I own the brand with them. We'll always own that together until we decide to both be out. But 
it was the move that we had to make in order mm -hmm. for it to live. Yeah. So I had to sacrifice in order for the business to keep going. Mm -hmm. But with that, God had something. I was when that right. first happened. You can ask y'all. I was depressed a little bit. Mm -hmm. It was tough. And I, it was a it was a tough situation because you just heard I was working for that company for free at the beginning, and then I built it with Ro. Mm -hmm. So it was a it was a tough thing, but it was a decision that had to be made because now I'm able to put more time into Cream Blends and to what we're doing with the agency. So we're able to really help more people, and I still am involved and still talk to to Ro. And we still bounce ideas and different things so yeah, that's our family. you know that's my brother yeah. for life mm -hmm. and i and if somebody was you know i'll go stand in front of burn rubber with him with the burners right, right. that's where it still is mm -hmm. you know because at the end of the day we're at the at the end of the day all of us are in a war every day of our life and we should be preparing as such absolutely man i talk all the time about there's no shame in building something amazing and seeing yeah. another avenue yes. and being able to humbly let go of what you built Come on. saying I built that, but there's a greater path for me. Yeah. To move it's a into. scary thing though. And I know you've experienced it too with some, hey, man. With, with you know, but look, but look where we're at now and shining, keep shining. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So let's yeah, talk about, shining. you said you mentioned cream blends and let's okay. talk what about, up, well, let's first, let's talk about the agency. Cause once again, so now that's the next move. Now you've, built your empire or, or you know doing your thing now you're nurturing the youth you're bringing other people up so talk yeah. about that so so we have we have we have a couple of standing clients and what we do at the agency is we call the distinct life is a brand development agency we understand brand better than most we we understand how to to to, to use brand color theory and and just identity development and what we do is we provide the we can we a company can come to us and we can start and create your full identity from the beginning. And then we also have services to support the 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 building of that brand and identity in the market. And that's what we really do with the agency. You can go to um distinctlife.com to learn, you know, really the the ins and outs of, of, of what the services that we provide. But that's really where we found our niches to really helping people and guiding their brands. Everyone's not a brand person. And once we understand in our community that everyone has a job, then we're gonna be stronger as a community. Everyone can see that, look at the murals, look at the sneakers, look at the, the stores, look at the brands that, that, I've, that I've touched and been a part of. And we can see that that's where God has blessed me with my expertise. What up, Mark? And I think that, oh, what up, Mark? That's our, that's our, Allie. yeah, Allie, our team is on here. Thank you for showing up. Um, I think, I think that, um, where was I at? You were just saying the brands that you've built. Oh, yeah, the that. brands that we've built, just, that's our time in. That's our track record. You can look at what we've done and see that they obviously know what they're doing. They're working with these big companies and handling their big. So what we want to do is offer that same thing to the community and say, hey, we can work, but we have to work in order. And everyone has to be able to do their job the best that they can do it. And then we win championships. Mike didn't win any of them championships by itself. Scottie Pippen had to do his thing. Everybody, BJ Armstrong. I'm about to say, man, come on. They had a, tie. They had a team. A Don't strong bring up the bulls. team, and that's my Don't point. Bring up the bulls in Detroit, you know, man. You gotta have a. I know. I, we, we can say even the even the. Uh, Let's talk bad boys. Okay? Even the bad boys. Look yeah. at it. You you look at Rick Mahorn and Isaiah Joe Dumars. Everybody had a role to play, and that's how they beat them. They weren't even supposed to beat them. They were the underdogs. We stayed the underdogs. When I came into the game with Burn Rubber, me and Ro being the 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 two young black guys with no experience in business and being able to take a business and take it from nothing to something, we're known around the world because of that. And that's a blessing from God because we're chosen. That's what's up. That's what's up, brother. Man, people, I, my, my scroll, I don't know if y'all can see, I'm learning this thing. I feel like an old person. I don't know if you can see all the comments coming in, but the amount of inspiration that you give to people that you might not know, man, is amazing man i don't know if all these people know you 
They do a little more now, but we are getting all kinds of praises. We got somebody who just signed on and joined That's Evan us. on the mural, just so you know. Okay, I was going to say, who's the young man in the mural? So talk. let's talk for people. Once again, how did you come up with this mural for people who just joined in? And how did you find him? Well, at the time, um, at the time that we did that mural, I was very, very heavy into photography. Like, I still am, but taking portraits and street photography was a, is, is, a, is a big hobby of mine. I've done sneaker projects that were based off of just that. And just looking at, looking at Evan and, and, and his face, he represents what so many kids in our community look like. And I'm like, yo, it's about the children. It's about the future. Let's put him on the, like my, um, Brandon and I, we discussed and it was like, yo, he would be perfect. So I think that's what ended up being. It's the focus of this mural is the people. Evan represents the people. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, so let's, we got a few minutes. I've, I've kept your time, but let's get into cream blends because yeah. man, y'all got brands on brands on brands and we could talk all day, but let's, <laughs> let's bring you in and talk about the cream blends. So thanks Jay. So cream blends, we started that in 2013. Um, just, I'm always like creating something. I'm a Pinterest uh, kind of yeah. sore looking online, DIY projects. And I was like, I had a, a friend that I worked with that was bringing like homemade candles and soaps and stuff to work. And so I told her that, that you know, that's really dope. You can teach me how to do that. So she said, yeah, we never really got the chance to like meet and really sit down and do it. But I ended up teaching myself how to make soaps how to make oils, and then it turned into body butter. I started giving it away to family and friends. And I didn't really expect it to grow into what it grew into so fast. So within like three months of me starting um, Cream Blends, we were all, I ended up getting a meeting with Whole Foods in East Lansing. Um, and so Cream Blends ended up in the East Lansing um, Whole Foods in Ann Arbor. So it kind of pushed me to grow extremely fast so it's you know that one thing like just jumping off the roof and hoping that the foundation will catch me when i fall if not i'll build another one if that one fails so that's how cream Lynn started we started in the house now we have a four thousand square foot facility in royal oak where we manufacture our products um we have the cream team that we started which is it's that now our focus is on trying to empower the people to get residual income from, you know, from different sources without me depending on a brick and mortar store or wholesale. So, That's good, yeah. so the cream team is one thing that I'm super excited about. To me, if you, if anyone that knows Yolanda and I, we, we celebrate Kwanzaa and we really adhere to the Nguzu Saba, which are 10 principles, seven principles that, that the community should familiarize themselves with because that helps us move forward. One of the principles is cooperative economics or group economics. And this is something that we really believe in. The people that the burn rubber is allowed to, to, to grow and cream blends is allowed to grow because of cooperative economics. When we drop projects, it's our people that support those projects. You know, and that's how we win. You know, so, so when it comes to that, when you look at the cream team, every person that, that is approved to be a part of the cream team has the opportunity to make 30% of every jar that they sell. So we just took, like, so I tell people, I, so there are partners in, instead in of focusing on doors and stores, we're focusing on the people. There are a lot of people that say, hey, Yolanda, I want to start a skincare um, manufacturing company or my own product-based company. Having a product-based business is extremely difficult. There's a lot of things that like we work with manufacturers that didn't work out. So now I'm literally building a full scale. We're literally building yeah. a full scale manufacturing facility with filling machines and conveyor belts. Dry, like whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait. Everything. Y'all started yeah. in the basement. Yeah. Started in the kitchen. In the kitchen. Yeah. In the kitchen. Yes. And now y'all already at four thousand square feet now. Yes. Yeah. So and we're you're trying going to bigger. Yeah. You know, but at first we were gonna Jay, we were gonna work with a manufacturer, but they couldn't meet the quality of and you know, I don't wanna have my stuff made in China. So I was like, look, this is gonna be a Michigan made 
manufacturing facility. So now it's, you know, it takes me a little bit longer to grow to grow to the L'Oreal status or Shea Moisture or whatever, but I'm I got time to that. So we're going to just build it as slowly as we can and make sure that the quality of the product works and if it takes me a little longer, at least I own we own 100% of our own shit. So there you have it. So that's how Premium started. And we're still moving even with the quarantine. Um, we have a product that no matter what the economy is doing, your skin's still going to get dry. So I thank God for, for that. <laughs> man, man, man. I, I'm, I, every time I talk to y'all, I, I get the chills. And I actually get mad at myself because I ain't doing enough shit right now. Oh, I got like four high. things well, going Jay, on. Jay, you're an inspiration, bro. You inspire us. I ain't got 10 things going on. I, I, are y'all going to launch the lemonade? Are the boys ready to put the lemonade out? That was, so that's yeah. one of our exercises. And actually, we might develop it more. Yeah. But that was, so how we teach our children, uh, like, the boys, <laughs> they, they use. <laughs> man, <you're out. laughs> so the boys, sorry. I know it's life, baby. Go. I know. And my but, best friend is on here. She's talking about how my dog has a bad attitude. So, <laughs> so what was I even saying? So you the said lemonade. lemonade. Oh, yeah. The lemonade was an exercise. So what we did with the boys, were it was like this. Ricky was like, yo, dad, I want to um, start a lemonade stand. Mom, what can we do? And I'm like, well, first of all, we're not going to do this half-ass. So we sat down and we we got sat with the whiteboard and we started putting on we put like 10 names down mm -hmm. and then the names were like okay which one makes the most sense and then we told them for with those names we we all our whole family it was all four of us settled on cool juice i think rick came up with that cool juice and then we we're like okay so what kind of juice is gonna be lemonade it's gonna be cool and then it was what should the brand look like so you can go to you after we're done with this, you guys can go to Rick and Mace on Instagram and you'll see all of the branding. But we ended up creating a logo, creating a pattern, and then we started a website. And then the website was just to announce their four dates. They were going to be up at Cream Blends for four days. So instead of just doing a, 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 um, a little stand at the end of our um, driveway, we were like, look, location is important. So they came up to Cream Blends. They they opened up. They had that we made. Uh, what is it? Flat. Color changing cups. Yeah. So yeah. when you pour the cold juice in it, it changed color, and their logo was on it. Of and course. then Yolanda worked with them, and they did some tasting, and they developed a lavender, a lavender lemonade. Right. So then people, we got a good product. So we got the work location. We got a good location. We got a good brand. And we got a you know marketing a good model strategy. marketing. Strategy. They made like a thousand dollars. And, and they're four they're four days. Yeah, they're of course they days. did. Of course, what, yeah. what do you so, expect? But to us, that's a part of homeschool, even though it wasn't at the time. But we're teaching our children how to be independent. You can take anything in this house, and if you find value in it, you can sell that, mm -hmm. just like sneakers. Mm -hmm. Yep. So exactly. That's like, and so this year we might do something different. It might not be that, but it'll be something else. One of the other things that we're planning, and this is what, these are some of the things that we do for, that we, when we say that we're raising the revolution, this is what we're talking about. Yeah. Like when Ricky's about to turn 13, he gets an allowance, Mason gets an allowance. They get allowance for doing work around the house and handling their schoolwork. When you do that, we're teaching you that when you work, you're, there's a value for that work. Mm -hmm. So we're giving you allowance. But now, Ricky works for Cream Blends in the distinct life, and he comes up to the office three days a week with Yolanda. <laughs> so now he's getting two streams of income. He gets his, he gets his allowance. allowance, and then he gets his work money. And now he's going to, we're going to, when he's 13 and can actually legally open the bank account, mm -hmm. we're going to set up the bank account, and all of his work money will be direct deposited and then he's going to also have QuickBooks. So right now, he can start understanding checks and balances, assets and liabilities, and understand where he sits financially and economically with the, with the money that he has. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So that these are the plans and these are the little things that we've been working on. And then as we do that with our children, we're going to obviously put it into a branded uh, concept from the distinct life so that we can share it with the community. But that, that whole thing, like Inspire was the second mural that I did in, on, on Linwood. And when we did that Inspire mural, that's our concept that we push. And we feel like that's our mission. That's the mission of the, the, the agency is to inspire. We inspire through our lives. The distinct life represents the talented tenth and it represents our family and what we do. And that's how we inspire people to do, to do more in their own families and in their, in their own community. So the goal <laughs> is to try and build, build these programs through our own agency so that we can help the community become stronger. And we're working on a few plans too, Jason, that we're gonna share to, you know, for people to activate their communities. Like Rick and I uh, reached out to the chief of police um, in the city of Southfield, the chief of police in the city of Royal Oak. We have meetings scheduled with them. So we're, we're investing all of this time and resources and um, knowledge into our boys. So we don't want you to kill them when they get to the age where now they can see the, you know, the success of their labor. So I can't invest all this in my son for you to kill him on the streets for pulling them over for going for a run or being in the wrong neighborhood. So we're doing both. So it's like you're raising your children now, but then I have to think about their future when they're no longer cute to you. When, right. they, when they have, bra they decide they want to get braids to the back or tattoos or whatever and still be just as educated yeah. as anybody like else, young. but they're a threat. So that yeah. cute little boy that you tell us at the grocery store, oh my God, they're so well behaved. Teach, we're trying to find ways to teach those people Tell your wives to stop picking up their fucking cell phones and calling police for dumbass reasons because to me that's attempted murder considering yeah, what that's what's gonna happen. Will happen. So we there's just so many different things that we're building. It's you know, sometimes it can be challenging trying to build entrepreneurship and then social justice programs, and then I'm reading documents about twenty first century policing, a Obama administration document that was totally um eliminated when Trump came in office. So we're trying to learn and educate. And so it's a lot right now for, you know, for black families. And we're trying to keep up and still maintain our sanity and not raise children to live in fear. Because I don't want my child walking with their head down and timid every time they walk out the house. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and the strong family foundation is important. And what y'all are showing right now is that foundation that's going to raise our kids the right way so they understand all angles of this war yeah. that's happening in our streets right now. Whether it be uh, intellectual, whether it be financial, everybody has to understand every angle that we're being attacked at right yeah, now. Yeah, every yeah. angle. That's what's going down. Strategy. Strategy. That, that's what's up, man. Thank y'all for coming Thank on. You. Before Real I let quick. you go, I, you done talked about everything that's happening. What's the next thing? What's the next thing? There it is. <laughs> These are next. And they will Size be available 11. and we're Size just working 11. on Yeah, huh? Oh, Size you. 11. We got and, it, Jack. But look, when these come out, there's we're just talking to a couple organizations right now because when we drop these, the proceeds from these are going to go to help a local organization that we believe in. So okay. that's what we're waiting on. It's really, we could drop them now, but we got to wait until everything is in order. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I know I'll be by the office this week. I'm not going to say what I'm leaving with, but I'm coming through once again. Yeah, we're there. 11. Uh, I love y'all more than love anything, too, man. Jack. I love what y'all are doing. Appreciate Thank you, you doing. for taking the time, man. Let's get together. I got you, Corey. And uh, let's do some more work in the, in, the, in the community, man. Let's build. Okay. okay. All right, All right Jay, I'll talk to y'all soon. All Thank right, you, bye, Jay. Bye, everybody. All right, everybody. So there you have it. Uh, sorry about the technical difficulties earlier, but that was hands down an amazing interview with some of the most amazing, beautiful people that I know. And it's awesome that I get the opportunity to share experiences that I've had with them, with you. If any of you would like to go on a tour, we will see over 80% of the tours on the walking tour. You will see 100% on the, of the tours on the e-bike tour. If you would like to go on the tour, which you should, and see all of these amazing murals, not just Rick's, 
but we got stuff all the way through the market. Please go to ridedetroit.com, book your tour, either walking or e-bike, or go to muralsinthemarket.com and find out more information there about everything that is murals, volunteering, what's going on in the future. And you can also go to One Times Run and see where you can uh, purchase prints from a lot of the artists to uh, add to your collection. And all and money goes to the artists. So don't think that it's just the cash cow, baby. This is how these artists make money. So go buy some prints. Go buy some merchandise. Come down to Eastern Market and enjoy the art. I'm Jason Hall with Ride Detroit. I will see you next Saturday at 11 a.m. Be here. I don't know who my guest is going to be, but it will be a doozy, all right? Let's make it through this week, everybody. Hold your shit together. Keep focused on the struggle and what the message is. Keep the fucking pressure on and do not stop. Let's go.